Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very special, interesting episode of The Wayward Dragons. I say very special and interesting because my wonderful co-host has no freaking clue what we're talking about. <laughs> no, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we, we originally had something planned, uh, and after talking, we are just like, wait, we've already basically done this. Yeah. So... Uh, Kelsey was like, well, it's your episode, so why don't you pick a topic? So I'm like, great, I'll pick a topic. <laughs> and uh, struggled and struggled and struggled and finally had one come to me. So I'm like, you know what? That's that's uh, that's good. Uh, you know, just evil laugh here. I just, mwah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so I picked this topic totally in secret. Um, yeah, I, I was kind of debating between whether I wanted to do necromancy okay. or kitchen witchery. Uh, two very different topics. <laughs> and while Those I love are like opposite stuff, ends of the spectrum. <laughs> yes, yes they are. <laughs> uh, while I love spooky stuff, yeah, uh, and this is a topic I would love to talk about. I don't know. We've We've got a lot of like shit going on some of that can be dark yeah uh so i figured we'd go with the kitchen witchery there you go so we're talking about being a kitchen witch Woo! yay uh <laughs> so what makes a good kitchen witch and you know why is it good to know one yeah oh by the way my name's johnny i don't know if i said that i don't think i said <laughs> I <was> that like, <laughs> so hi guys <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm not Kelsey since I said Kelsey's name. <laughs> like, I'm Kelsey. <laughs> so yeah, sorry. You'll have to excuse me. I'm running on two hours of sleep. Yeah. Yes. So, simply put, a kitchen witch is someone who practices kitchen witchery. You know, <laughs> mm. if that doesn't make sense, or if you don't understand what that means, I don't know what to tell you, bud. Uh. It's someone who uses spellcraft in producing foods, drinks, yes. or really any type of consumables. So, um, yeah. yeah, hey, you can be a kitchen witch and be a mixologist and make, mm -hmm. you know, tinctures and beverages for mm -hmm. people with that are <laughs> alcoholic. <laughs> or you can be a kitchen witch and do baked goods or, you know, all sorts of other food stuff. Yeah. I mean, you can so also chances kind of a mixture of both. That's yeah. the one thing I've, I've learned is it's okay to not put a label on yourself. You don't have to be a certain type of witch. I identify more as kitchen or a um, herbalist more than yeah. anything because I do a lot of tunctures and stuff. <laughs> so chances are due to COVID and the cost of stuff nowadays and how much it costs eating out mm -hmm. uh, and going out. A lot of people are probably spending more time at home. Yes. While you're at home, you're more than likely making your own food. Mm -hmm. Obviously meal prepping for work, because let's be honest, uh, at least in the United States, uh, yeah, it's almost impossible to afford anything. And yeah. a lot of people have two jobs. Either that or they're overworked at their one job that it's hard for them to function. So a lot of people do meal prep. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, making cocktails and such. Yes. If not, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I don't know why you're listening to this episode. Cut it out. No. Uh, <laughs> if, if, if none of those are you, that's fine. You, could, I'd still say give this a listen because, you know, it might change your perspective on things or give you a little insight. Uh Yes. Regardless of what you're doing, you know, many of us are super freaking busy. And let's be honest, sometimes you have to say, okay, do I have time to make food? Do I want to make food? Or do I want to, you know, practice my craft or what? Well, mm -hmm. great news, guys. Regardless of which one you're doing with this, you can actually do both. Mm hmm because, you know, it's all important. And it's important to take the time to feed your body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. 
uh, while we are all at least. Uh, what? Blah, 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 blah. Let me try that again. While I hope you spending time with us and listening to us talk is at least somewhat feeding your mind, you still got to take care of your body and spirit. Yes. Because uh, those, you know, the importance of their well being, your health, and your mood, all super important. Yes. To quote an anime like a nerd that I am, and no, it's not One Piece for those of you who uh, <laughs> are listening to my our episodes in the wrong order and or listen to our last episode where I go on a rant about how much I love One Piece and I'm excited for the live action. It's actually from Soul Leader. But uh, the quote is, a sound soul resides within a sound mind with a sound, sa- resides within a sound body with a sound mind. Uh, so we must, in other words, we must feed all aspects of ourself. Yes. With what is best for us. Now, does that mean we can't eat out from time to time or eat a little junk food? No. Enjoy what you enjoy. Just enjoy it in moderation. Yes. Just remember that everything you put into your body is fueling your body in some way, shape, or form. Whether that be intentions, food, uh, you know, if you have a little drinky drink, whatever. Uh, all that being said, how do we take care of ourselves via kitchen witchery? Honestly, it's super simple. Mm-hmm. You essentially just make your kitchen into your temple. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. work to keep it clean, keep it cleansed. You can even put a small altar in there. Remember, yeah. guys, food is magic. It is. How is food ma- uh, magical, you may be thinking? Well, it's simple. When we cook, we're not only preparing for what we will consume physically, but also the energy that we are putting into the food. Simple, simple, uh, simple example here. Let's talk about pasta. Kels, let's talk about pasta. You love pasta, right? Everyone loves pasta. I love pasta. <laughs> so think about this. Say you're making, you know, spaghetti with a homemade tomato sauce. Yeah. Uh, what are you really consuming? Well, Pasta is typically made out of flour, predominantly. Yeah. And most flour that the pasta is made out of comes from wheat. You can simply, when you're making the pasta, you can thank a goddess of the harvest Mm -hmm. for, you know, the work that she's put into to cultivate it and for her to bless it. You know, give Demeter, Ishtar, there are numerous others. I... Do not want to go into the whole freaking list here. Wheat is typically used as a magical symbol for fertility and fruitfulness, and oftentimes wealth as well. Yeah. It is sometimes eaten to induce fertility and to bring in wealth. Water, of course, is a symbol of birth and death in the cycle of life, and salt is used typically for cleansing and ground uh, grounding. You can literally make a ritual out of making spaghetti noodles. Mm-hmm. In the mm-hmm. fire that boils the water, the water itself, the salt. Mm-hmm. Sauce is, t- if you just have a like, standard tomato sauce uh, that you're making, a lot of the time it's simply made up of tomatoes, olive oil, onions, garlic, and various herbs such as basil. Yeah. I put rosemary in mine. Well, you can even do rosemary. Actually, we can get to that in a second. So, (laughs) if you look at, like, magical herbs and what plants are used for, tomatoes are typically used for uh, prosperity, protection, Mm -hmm. and love. Olive oil is typically used for protection, healing, purification. Mm -hmm. Onions, typically it's protection, exorcism, healing, money, prophetic dreams, and lust. Garlic, similarly, is protection, healing, exorcism, lust, and anti-theft, which was interesting. That's, yeah. Basil, or basil for some of our listeners, is uh, typically used for love, exorcism, wealth, and protection. In other words, with the right intentions, when you're making the spaghetti ritual, you can bring forth wealth, love into your life, and protection. 
Mm -hmm. You can literally be making spaghetti to bring love into your life. Yeah. And let's be honest. Eating pasta is self-love. It is. <laughs> so just just add the intention in there. And uh, yeah. who, who doesn't love pasta? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, mean, that is, is can, I think of all like the herbal properties of all these things. Well, so that's, that's the thing too, is that's part of this is like looking at the herbal, herbal properties and what they bring in. So you said you use rosemary. Yes. I use rosemary in a lot of stuff. Do, do, do. But you, As like, I'm looking through. this has been a conversation a lot in my life <laughs> the last couple of weeks. Okay. So here you go. Mm-hmm. Rosemary is typically used for protection, love, mm-hmm. lust, exorcism, purification, healing, sleep, mm-hmm. and uh, increasing mental abilities. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that works as well. And so you're, you know, you're literally, you've got a pot, you're, you know, you're making your spaghetti, spaghetti noodles. When you make your uh, sauce, you're putting all these things in and you can simply, you know, ask for a blessing or some sort over yeah. it and ask for the blessing of what you're putting in and saying, you know, I put this in with the intention of blank. Yeah. And you're literally making magic as you're cooking food. Yes. And then and you can do this with literally any food, not just pasta, obviously. Pasta is the easiest. Uh, soup. Just, soup. Yeah. Oh, soup is a great one. Um, yeah, just look at look at all the parts of what you're putting into it and how it plays into your own personal practices and beliefs. You know, I'm not going to say this definitely means this, this definitely means this, because that fluctuates sometimes from person to person. Yeah. Uh, you can do this with your meal prepping. You know, instead of thinking... Um, instead of thinking about how shitty your work week's going to be and like, well, I've got to do this. I've got to deal with this client. I've got to send out these reports. I've got to look at this data. You know, I've got to deal with these customers. I've got to work with this person I don't like. You know, don't think negative thoughts. Put positive intention into it. And yes, I know this sounds like a bit of a cliche in this day and age with a lot of the woo-woo and the whole manifest your own reality stuff that a lot of I call them pop witches or, you know, the TikTok witches and stuff that are, yeah. you know, jump on the bandwagon. The, you know, it's, if that's your practice, that's fine. But as, you know, we said when we started this podcast, part of the reason why we're doing this is to give information to people, not just, and like all the information, not just the woo-woo stuff and try and give as accurate as we can, uh, yeah. not just what's nice to hear. Yeah, there's a lot of misinformation, especially on TikTok. Yeah, and while there is some truth in it, um, there's also a lot of BS. But yes, putting your intentions into the universe or putting your intentions into the food has a higher statistical chance of making it happen. Yeah. You know, you're, you're literally manifesting and you're literally charging your food while you're making it. To make your week better, to make your day better, you know, in a way, yeah. to give you the courage to talk to that person that you have, you know, a crush on, to give you the backbone to stand up and say, "I'm not going to take this anymore." To, you know, give you the dedication to see something and you know push through it. Yeah, it's there, and you just you have to put in the intention you have to put in the effort to make that happen but this is i mean this is the basics of what kitchen witchery and kitchen uh, kitchen witch does so let's uh let's talk about magical tools in the kitchen shall we okay what should or can you use truthfully you can use any kind of kitchen tool or appliance that you want just you know consecrate it and uh you know, that being said, you can, of course, you can look into the materials that the tools are made out of. Uh, cast iron. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm from the South and we are, we're cast iron people. <laughs> you are. <laughs> cast iron is a, for instance, is amazing. It is. You know, it, I mean, hell, that's what most 
quote unquote witches' cauldrons are made out of. Yep. That being said, if you're working with the Fae, you should probably not use cast iron if you're like making food offering for them. Yes. So you could pick a special kitchen knife and use that as your athame while you're creating stuff, or have a wooden spoon and use that as your wand. I've actually known numerous kitchen witches that have actually engraved and like burned in sigils and or runes into their wooden cooking spoons Mm -hmm. to help channel and enhance the magical flow. Yeah. You know, it, it, it seems a little weird, a little silly at times, but I don't know, man, it seems to work. Uh, I would say that, you know, these acts may seem mundane, but they can 100% be act, uh, magical. And if you're not going to use, if you're not going to do kitchen witchery all the time, and you're going to consecrate some of these items for this, I would say have a separate one for mundane purposes. Yeah. Uh, that way, if you're like, fuck that guy, fuck that guy, as you're you know, cooking something, yeah. you know, giving like that anger into it, not messing with the energy of the yeah, weird stuff. I mean, like I said, literally any tool can be magical. Yes, very much so. You no, know, and you know, deities, of course, <laughs> typically harvest deities, uh, anything really that involves food, hearth deities, uh, hearth goddesses, great for kitchen witchery. But yeah, just put forth your intentions and look at what you're doing, you know, while you're milk prepping or planning stuff out and. You know, there's, I know plenty of vegetarians, I know a few vegans that, you know, take pride in what they eat, and this Mm -hmm. would be a great thing to add on to that. Of course, I'm not saying go vegan, not saying be a vegetarian. That stuff does not work for everyone. That is not a diet that is correct for everyone. Um, If it's great for you, then great. But as with everything, one, don't be a dick pusher, like personal practices on other people. Two... Not everyone's body is the same. What works for you health wise does not work for everyone. Yes. I mean, that's that's my that's that's a big complaint I have with like diet plans and stuff. And it's like, oh we I want this diet and this, this, and this. And it's like great. That literally Good that's great that if that works for you, but it doesn't work for everyone because not everyone's biology is the same. Yeah. With and with like, you know, jumping back, uh you know, if you are a person who enjoys imbibing in alcohol, you can take it and uh, take some strong distilled liquors and let herbs set in them uh, or let fruit set in them and give the intention from that into the alcohol and make basically a potion tonic when you drink it, you know, or if it's, you know that something has it in it, you can already do that. Like if you were doing something with anise or anise as some people pronounce it you know you can use jaeger for that i found out recently that's actually an old ladies drink in germany yeah like that's a drink that old ladies drink in germany Hmm. and a lot of like at least before fireball came along a lot of frat boys and stuff were just like yeah jaeger bombs i cannot see an old (laughs) bitty like sitting and drinking jaeger I mean, I can see it. It's delicious. I can, so I can see I can an see old it. German bitty doing it. No, that's what I'm saying. It's an old Ger- like it's, In Germany, it's an old lady's drink. That's funny. That's interesting. But yeah, that's that's what I have on that. Of course, there's a number of books out there that you can pick up on the topic. Uh, I sadly did not have time to get any of them and read them. I know. I'm I'm a disappointment. Well, I have a lo- I have one that's called The Green Witch. Uh-huh. Um, let me pull it out. And I got this from Barnes and Noble. But it talks about like um the natural magic of herbs, flowers, essential oils and more. So I have on herbs, uh, Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs, great book. 
But as far as like witchcraft and stuff, or as far as like witch, kitchen witchery specifically, um, there's the Kitchen Witch by Amy Harmony. Yeah. There's the Book of Kitchen Witchery by Carriage Greenleaf. And then there's Kitchen Witches <coughs> Guide to Recipes for Love and Romance. Uh, who is this by? Don Aurora Hunt. And all of these came like highly reviewed from what I saw. Yeah. Yeah. Because my, my path is more understanding the practical purpose behind the the herbs and the um the food yeah and then fig then learning the magical purpose behind it i want to know what the food can do for me what this one thing can do is it antibacterial is it antifungal is it good for your lymph nodes type thing? And then yeah. then figuring out the magical purpose behind it. That's my thing because I, my husband and I are, are wanting to homestead. So figuring out herbal remedies. And that's another thing. Like you can make medicine obviously from the earth, but it helps some if you... One, know the magical purpose behind what you're making the tincture of, so that way you put the right intention eventually in it. That's my goal anyway. Because <laughs> I have a lot yeah. of herbalism books of how to make tunctures and breads and all that stuff from scratch. That's This has been a big conversation I've been having a lot. Is um we are taking we are slowly taking processed food out of our lives so we're eating what we obviously have in the house but we're not replacing it with the same item we're replacing it with a less processed food and eventually a homemade version um of that product eventually so that way we're not putting poison in our bodies <laughs> a big problem yeah. in today's is well because a lot of times they don't have we don't make food we don't no like we don't buy food rather we buy food products and a lot of things yes that's because yeah. it's that's so freaking very... processed and there's no telling what's actually in there yes yes yeah because yeah it's there's a lot of shit in your food there's a lot of shit in your food that's not good for you. And I think that's why we saw during COVID, you have a lot of people that started homesteading because, yep. and the, the price of food is going up and it's like, I can make it cheaper and I can make it better for myself. It might not be like, it might be around the same price, but by eliminating all these processed foods, I'm eventually going to feel a lot better. Yeah. And a lot of people in our generation are um, having colon cancers and like intestinal cancers and stuff like that. And it's like, well, yeah, what we've been eating this processed stuff since from the get go. I mean, all the crap that we put into our bodies, like it's like, yeah. And I mean, I'm, you know, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but it's going to sound like conspiracy theory, but it's like, <laughs> there's a reason why we're having more and more health issues and you have more and more health issues with the less amount of money that you have and you can't pay for these things and people are getting driven into debt. Yes. It's a big, when the, wealth, when big the wealthy pharma. people can literally afford good food yeah. They, you know, live yep. better lives because they can afford to live better lives. Yep. I mean, that's, that's, that's why, you know, not okay. that's why a Coke, that's why a bottle of Coke, 20 ounce bottle of Coke is, you know, a, a dollar, dollar and then a same size bottle of water is like $3. Yep. 
Like, what? Something's wrong with that picture. Yeah. Well, like, um, I'm obviously drinking. I'm a huge Mountain Dew fan, and that's one of the things that has to go. Is once the Mountain Dew's gone in the house, we're not getting any more. And I've switched to, um, Milo Sweet Tea. Have you had them? Uh-huh. Okay. So I, ha- I think I have, yeah, but I'm not a big sweet tea fan. Mm-hmm. So, two gallons of that is the same cost as one twelve pack of Mountain Dew. And this, that sweet tea is better for you. But it's like... Well, except I, for, like, all the freaking sugar that's in it, but... Whatever. <laughs> it's nice and it'll be fucking fine. It'll dilute itself. <laughs> I'll be just fine. <laughs> I've said it with some... I, I, I don't really like sweet tea, so... <sighs> yes, I'm, I'm from the South, and I don't like sweet tea. I'm broken. You know, uh, every, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. But... Yeah, no, I, that's, I think, sums this up, guys. Is you know, think about what you're eating, think about what you're putting into your body, and use yeah. that for magical means, and you know, maximize your time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's I, you know, I'm a big proponent in continuous improvement and self help and all that and self improvement, but you know, the best thing you can do, and I, I hate saying this because this is like sounds so capitalist corporate America, if you can find a way to streamline the process, streamline the process, especially <laughs> in this day and age. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So I, I, think, I think it is time for us to do our readings. Yes. So I pulled the Queen of Pentacles. I pulled the Hierophant. The what? The Hierophant. Okay. That like it may our... have another name. Huh? Yeah, it's number five. Oh, you've pulled that before. Have I? Yeah. Because I made the I don't same think I have. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah, want to go first? Have... I can give me one second because I write down what we've pulled. Queen, where'd you go? Okay. Keywords practicality, creature comforts, financial security. To meet the Queen of Pentacles is to be ushered into a warm and loving home where you will be nurtured and taken care of. It is easy to see that the greatest joy of the Queen of Pentacles is to take care of others. To make sure that her visitors feel happy. Even when times are tough, the Queen of Pentacles makes do. She finds a use for all things and handles situations with sensibility, practicality, and sincerity. For this reason, she is usually adept at her work and has achieved much success in her career. To see her means that you are called to approach the situation with simple common sense. Or it is an indication that financial and world stability is here. The card lesson, I care for myself so that I may care for others. Okay. Which... That goes along weirdly with our uh, topic for the day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my husband and I... We'll talk about this after, but... Yeah. My husband and I had a conversation, and this makes... A lot of sense. Alrighty. So the Hierophant is the masculine counterpart of the High Priestess. He's also known as the Pope or the Teacher in other tarot card decks. Upright, the Hierophant represents an established set of spiritual values and beliefs and is often correlated with religion and other forms of formal doctrine. Uh, before you can discover your own belief system and make your own choices as associated with the next card, the lover, the Hierophant encourages you to learn the fundamental practices for a trusted, from a trusted source. So 
in other words, look for a teacher, you know, look for help. Don't just assume you know what you're talking about. Don't just, you know, take everything at face value. Look to better yourself, but better yourself from someone who knows what they're talking about. Okay. So what do they mean together? Yeah, what do they mean together? So, hmm. You are... You are going to be presented with someone or situation that is going to teach you the importance of stability or is going to give you stability in a way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and like teach you to find the stability for yourself. You know, it's yeah. Life is a journey. Yes. And you know, we just kind of have to live that journey and learn from those who have already lived the journey. Yes. So I think that wraps us up beautifully. Yes, it does for today. This is a so kind of until a next thing. time, make sure you're sharing our stuff with people. Yes. Make sure Please rate, review, friends. subscribe, tell people, tell your enemies. And if you have a tell topic, your dog. yeah, tell everybody. Um, if you have a topic recommendation or if you have a book recommendation, you can email us at thewaverdragons at gmail.com. And yeah, until next time. I'm Johnny. And I'm Kelsey. Bye. Bye.